Hello, my name is Reverend Tom Stanley and I am the senior minister here at Central Christian Church in Enid, Oklahoma. I want to welcome you to our online ministry. During these profoundly challenging times, it is important to remain safe, socially distanced, and wear a mask whenever possible. My hope and prayer for you and your family is that you will remain safe and healthy and blessed by God. Our online ministry here at Central Christian Church is growing. We are touching the lives of thousands of people every single month. Our goal is to share the gospel and good news of Jesus Christ, our love for our neighbors, and the welcome of God to everyone. If you're new to our ministry, please check out our website at centralenid.org and our Facebook page. A completely new website is in the works and will be rolling out in the next few weeks, so don't be surprised if it changes suddenly. If you would like to join this fellowship and partner your ministry with ours, we would welcome you with open arms. All are welcome in our ministry, fellowship, and worship. If you would like to support the ministry of this place as we change lives of people in Enid, in Oklahoma, and around the world, there, there are several ways that you can give. You can connect to our website and give online. You can download the Givelify app and find Central Christian Church of Enid and donate that way. We also have the ability to take ACH deposits, which are directly withdrawn from your bank account. You can use your credit card on the website or on the Givelify app. If you have questions about how to support the ministry of God here at Central, please don't hesitate to call our office. My deepest prayer is that God will bless you and make God's face to shine down upon you and grant you peace today. Have a blessed day.
Good morning and welcome to our fourth Sunday of Advent worship. I'm grateful for you taking time out of your busy schedule to be here with us today. A few announcements that I want to remind you of. We will do curbside communion today, 1130 to 12, right out on the southwest corner of the sanctuary, or off the office, excuse me. We will, Monday and Tuesday, the office will be open regular hours. The sanctuary will also be open 9.30 to 3. On Wednesday, December 23rd, the office closes at noon. Prior to that, from 10.30 to 11.30, we will be celebrating Patricia's retirement. So if you would like to bring her a gift, a card, or anything else, we would love to receive you from 10.30 to 11.30. It'll probably be drive up the same way we do drive through communion. And then the offices will remain closed until Monday, January 4th after that. We will celebrate Christmas Eve in person right out on the north side of the building. We've gotten permission to close Broadway. We will have a drive up Christmas Eve service. Tomorrow at 10 a.m., actually Friday by the time you're watching this, I will have had Jay Curtis Huckleberry and his engineer here at the church to program our FM broadcaster and troubleshoot it, make sure we don't have any problems ahead of our Christmas Eve service. So I am looking forward to that. Mickey has something for us, so I'm going to step away and let her speak to you. Good morning. I am here representing you, the congregation, to give a gift to each of our staff members and our senior minister for their hard work this last year. So these uh, Christmas gifts will be distributed to each of our employees. This is thanks to you and your generosity. Thank you very much, Tom. I know all the staff echoes these words, but we are grateful for your consideration, grateful for your gift, your time, your talents, and all you do for this church. And we are happy and honored to serve this amazing congregation. Would you bow your heads and pray with me? Most holy, as we gather this last Sunday before Christmas, we are wrapping up our journey through Advent. The opportunity to make straight paths for the Lord does not end with Advent. It continues all year long. And so today, as we pray and prepare for Christmas Eve and pray and prepare for Christmas morning, help us to be acutely aware that we are to be preparing paths for our Lord Jesus. Make straight those paths. Bring honor and glory to your name and be your image in the world today. As we worship, prepare our hearts, prepare our minds and set them on you that we may worship with gladness, with wholeness and with joy. In the precious name of your son Jesus we pray, amen. Chuck, would you lead us in our call to worship? Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship. We gather today to celebrate and proclaim God's love through Jesus the Christ. We give glory to God in the highest. We, we celebrate, celebrate the, the coming, coming of God's Messiah. Let, Let us, us worship, worship and praise, and praise God, God together as we, we await, await the, coming the coming Christ. Christ.
I hope you will join me in welcoming the Waldrop family as they light our Advent candles for this, our last Sunday of Advent. This is from Luke 1, verses 26 through 38. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that the census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first sentence, census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to his own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth to Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house in the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be, he was pledged to, be, to marry him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in the manger because there was no room for them in the inn. Imagine the difficulty of this young couple. Having traveled over a great distance, they find themselves out on the street, exhausted, discouraged, nerves on edge, and hope running thin. Were they wondering if God was going to pull them through this? But God does, doesn't he? The, and probably in the way that they had never expected. Perhaps God will do this for you this Christmas, pull you through the hard time in a way that you never expected. Will you pray with me? Lord God, you know it is hard for us to imagine Mary and Joseph as discouraged parents, but you know discouragement follows us all. We ask that this Christmas you give us a full blessing of hope that, the, that Jesus Christ promised us. In your name we pray, amen. Sonia, Brooke, Chuck, appreciate you all very much. I'm grateful for you sharing your gifts with us. On the back of your bulletin is our prayer concern list. I have lots of good news this week. Irene went home today on Thursday, and by Sunday she will be at home resting comfortably. Scout is a little bit better this week. Jim... The Glasgow's cousin is slightly better this week. We continue to hold that family in prayer since his wife Lisa passed away from COVID. We continue to pray for Baris as she prepares for eye surgery. We also continue to pray for Kathy as she prepares for knee surgery. Penny Bishop also is recovering well and is expected to be home by the time this service airs. Got a phone call today that Roy's surgery not only went well, but he will be in rehab starting tomorrow. So we can, ex we can be excited about that. We continue to pray for Mary as she has a long road to recovery ahead of her. We continue to pray for Brent, Mary Susan and Steve's son, also a long road ahead of him and Karen, a friend of the Bushmans who has been diagnosed with cancer. I'm grateful for all of you who request prayer, who 
need prayer, I ask that you join us together today as we pray together, where we claim the promise of God that where two or more are gathered, God is here also. So it doesn't matter to me where you are gathered. You are gathered with us. So let us pray. Holy and amazing God, we offer gratitude, worship, and praise for these good reports that we have gotten about these that we love. We celebrate that you work through the doctors and nurses, the physical therapists, the aides, and bring healing into the lives of these who are hurting. We continue to ask your presence with these who are anticipating surgery. We ask your presence for these that are in the hospital with COVID-19. We pray that you will protect the doctors and nurses and the ordinary patients that are in the hospital right now. We celebrate that this vaccine has begun rolling out we are grateful for the wisdom you provided that made it possible. As we pray the prayer your son taught us, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
The title of this sermon may be one of the most important questions we ask ourselves at any one time or place. However, in the midst of COVID-19, in the midst of the middle of Advent, it's perhaps a little more pressing. How will you respond to God's call? How will we respond to God's call? On Monday, I was writing my grant report to the Oklahoma Disciples Foundation for the grant they gave Central for the foster care ministry for 2020. I knew there were many things that we had done to help foster kids and parents over the course of this year, but until I actually wrote them all down, it was really quite hard to encapsulate them all. But as I laid them out, step by step, throughout the course of the year, it was really quite profound. And that moment of clarity I had as that thought struck, the needs of those foster kids and families did not diminish in the face of COVID-19. They increased. This same thing is true for all of our church families. The same thing is true for all of the people we serve at the welcome table, at foster feet, at the warmth project. The needs this year have not reduced simply because of COVID-19. If anything, they have increased. There are many people, my family included, who feel like this year has been moments long or years long, depending on that moment. It feels almost simultaneous, like nothing is going on and yet everything is happening at once. There's not enough hours in the day. One thing I can tell you for sure is the ministry of this church has never stopped. We have continued to meet the needs of church members. We have continued to meet the needs of the hungry, the unsheltered, foster families. I cannot thank you enough for supporting the ministry of Central Christian Church in 2020. I know this year has been challenging, but watching our church family continue to follow God's call 
to ministry this year has been a profound blessing. Today, as we enter that fourth Sunday of Advent, we are looking at Mary as she answers that question and responds to God, how will she answer? Now, we know this story, but let's listen to it again. Listen to it with fresh ears. We need to understand how she will react to this shattering news that has been given to her. One of the Bible studies that I read each week in prepping for Sunday touched my heart this week. It challenged my understanding of this text. And I want you to hear these words because we've read this text so many times we can almost approach it as if, oh yes, 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 I've read this before. I know this story. We need to hear it with fresh ears. Lauren Win Winner wrote that she tried something new this year as she was reading this text. She took her Bible as she was preparing for the sermon. She went to a jazz festival sat on a bench and read the story that we will read today, listening to jazz music play in the background. She was practicing what theologians call dislocated exegesis. That's reading and experiencing the scripture in a different place, a different way than we previously have done so. Now, I, I'll be honest, I tend to read scripture in my office at home in my recliner or right here in this pulpit. So taking that and going somewhere else was an interesting idea. So I took my Bible with me this week. I read in different places. I pondered this story in different ways, trying to hear it again anew, fresh, this year. Winner also wrote that one thing you can almost always find in jazz music is improvisation. Musicians take what she knows of scales and modes and, and changes it around into, uh, wow, I cannot read today, but that's okay. Changes it into something new. And that is the same thing we need to do when we read this story. We need to be challenged by it Listen to it from a different angle. Hear it anew. The word improvise comes from the Latin meaning not foreseen. Surely Mary did not foresee that one day while she was at home calmly practicing her scales as a jazz musician might, an angel would show up and announce, oh, by the way, you're going to be pregnant. And the baby's father is going to be God. And that baby will be a savior for all mankind. Now, while it is hard to foresee and hard to see this pregnancy as a gift from God, if you are Mary in the first century, her response is profound. She latches on like many of the women in scripture before and cries out, let it be as you have said. My heart exalts in the Lord. Hannah responded to the pregnancy that God had gifted to her. My heart exalts in the Lord. She sings, my strength is exalted in my God. These are the words that Mary chose. Listen to, these, listen to these words as we hear the Gospel of Luke again. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, to the town of Galilee, to a virgin who was pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel said to her, 
Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled by these words, wondering what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son. You will call his name Emmanuel. He will be great. He will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. Now, to be sure, Mary had a couple of questions. <laughs> How can this be, she asked. I am a virgin. The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you so that the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. She who is said to be barren is now in her sixth month. For no word from God will ever fail. Mary's answer should humble us all. I am the Lord's servant. May your word be fulfilled in me. And the angel left her. May the word of God bless you today. May it challenge you. May Mary's faith and her answer to God set your hearts, your minds, and your soul on God today, this fourth Sunday of Advent. Those last words of this text are so powerful, so instructive, so full of faith. It is just wonderful. The news Mary received couldn't have been anything less than shocking, horrifying, scary. But more than that, in her culture, it could have shamed not only her, but her family. Unmarried women who turned up pregnant had very little future during this time. They generally ended up unmarried, sometimes banished from their family, could have even ended up stoned. So this news, while profound, could have been seen as not good for many, many reasons. It's much like this week. We got news of the first doses of the COVID-19 vaccine. We celebrated the moment that we see the light at the end of this tunnel of 2020. However, that same day, the news came out of a truly horrific milestone. 300,400 people in the United States have died to this virus. It's hard to celebrate the rolling out of a vaccine. It's hard to see the hope that it represents when so many people are dying each day. But the message of hope remains just as it did for Mary. God's message to Mary was profound but troubling, like so many of God's messages to God's people. Even as we've read and focused on the words of the prophet Isaiah, the words were profound, but they were often troubling. Greetings to you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Hey, that's good news. I like that news. I, I'd like to hear that. That's great. But it says Mary was troubled by this greeting. Wasn't sure what it meant. And then the angel dropped that bomb. Don't be afraid, Mary. You've found favor with God. Oh, you're going to get pregnant. Wait. Wait. I'm confused. I thought this was good news. Mary had to know or at least recognize that even 
as her life would be hard, her son's life would also be profoundly difficult. Even if she took these, these words literally, that Jesus would be an earthly king, the Romans would not have given up lightly or without a fight. Mary had to know that Jesus' life would be a struggle. It would be full of hardship and difficulty. No mother wants that for their child. However, just like us today, Mary was holding on to a promise. A promise because she knew what Jesus' name meant. She knew that Emmanuel in Hebrew, Jesus, meant God with us, means God with us. Mary would have known that God would walk with Jesus all the days of his life with a name like that. The very name, Emmanuel, is a promise from God. The very same promise that we hold on to today. As we walk through these days approaching the coming Christ, God is with us. God remains with us. We have hope. We have love. We have peace because God is with us. Even as we sit socially distanced, sometimes alone, separated from those we love, God is with us. You see, we're never really alone. God is always with us. The challenge is, do we recognize God's presence? Do we feel God's presence? Are we even open to feeling God's presence in us? So my question stands, how will we respond to God's call for this Advent season as we enter 2021? Will you respond as Mary did? I am the Lord's servant. May your word be fulfilled in me. Or will we continue to stand caught between that uncertainty of what will come tomorrow? Or will we trust God's promise in the very name of Jesus that God is with us? I hope, I pray that you will join me as we stand together, as we pray together, as we minister together, because God is with us. I hope that you will cling to God who is present with you even now, no matter where you are. That you will depend on that promise, that you will rest in it, that you will allow God's peace to be with you today. And as we approach Christmas Eve, you will draw near to God just as we are called to do. We are the Lord's servants. May the Lord's words be fulfilled in us. Would you pray with me? Holy and amazing God, we are your servants. May your words be fulfilled in us. We take this example from the mother of our Lord. We are blessed by her faith. Blessed by your son. Who poured grace out in us that we might be redeemed. So today, help us to better be your image in the world. To celebrate the coming Christ. To make straight paths for you, for your son, as we prepare for the coming Christmas, as we prepare for the coming Christ. May your words be fulfilled in us. In the precious name of Jesus we pray. Amen.
Our call to stewardship this, this week, I think, is those words from Mary. We are the Lord's servants. May your words be fulfilled in us. God's blessing overflows in us. And we have the opportunity to return a portion of that to continue God's work in this place. Our board met Wednesday night and approved our budget for next year. It'll go out in the visitor in the coming weeks, so you will get to peruse it. But I am grateful for your faithfulness. I am grateful for your faith. So as we enter this new year together, as we enter this closing moments of Advent together, may we hold on to these words from Mary. We are the Lord's servant. May God's word be fulfilled in us. Let's take the offering. I, I keep forgetting. Please pray with me. You are the great provider, the giver of all gifts, your love, the only true currency. Thank you for putting money into our hands, and so we freely offer it back up to you for use in your service. We do this in the name of Jesus. Amen. As we come to this table today, we do so proclaiming the name Emmanuel that God is with us. We do so as ones called out, the Greek word koinonia, called out into relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Those words take on a special meaning during this time of Advent as we are preparing to celebrate the coming of Christ. Today, as you take your bread and your cup, we do so in eager anticipation, in hope, in excitement, preparing the straight paths for the Lord. Today, may we be God's image in the world. May everything we do and say bring glory to God. On that last night, Jesus was with his disciples. He took bread. He broke it. He said, eat. This is my body, and it will be broken for you. Likewise, he took a cup. He gave thanks. He blessed it. And he said, this is the cup of the new covenant. As often as you eat this bread and you drink from this cup, do so in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Dear Lord, you sent your son to us so humbly, born in a stable, a manger for his bed. The lowly shepherd came to see him. They even say the animals bowed down before him. The angel sang, the star shone bright. We quietly reflect on your gift to us and how this child changed the world forever. We take this bread and cup remembering your sacrifice and your love for us. Amen. As you take the bread, we pray that God will strengthen us and prepare us to be God's image in the world. As you drink from your cup, you proclaim that Jesus is the Christ the Son of the living God, and that we are His church. 
Amen. of prayer this week. This sanctuary will be open Monday and Tuesday. I would love to pray with you. If you would partner your ministry with this place, we would love to have you here. As we bring this time of worship to a close, we will continue our benediction liturgy that we have used throughout all of Advent. Go forth from this place an awakened people, aware of, God, of the world's darkness, yet reaching for the light. Go forth from this place, an expectant people, conscious of God's judgment in our midst, yet welcoming God's love and justice. We, we welcome, welcome God. God. We, we proclaim, proclaim Jesus has and will set us free. Go forth from this place as serving people, sensing anew the pain of so many, yet confident God will bring healing even through you. We open ourselves to be God's image in the world, to be God's hands and feet in this world. 
For we have heard God's good news, and we have been empowered to share it. May the God of peace be with you all today and forever. Amen. Amen. Secretary Patricia about an ACH automatic draw on your checking account. Again, thank you for worshiping with us and have a blessed week.